Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. This week, we'll read about the only one who brings true, everlasting peace. Please stay with us as we discuss this week's lesson entitled, Noble Prince of Peace. Our memory text is taken from Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sabbath Afternoon Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, who supervised the creation of the first atomic bomb, appeared before a U.S. Congressional Committee. They inquired of him if there were any defense against the weapon. Certainly, the great physicist replied. And that is? Dr. Oppenheimer looked over the audience and said softly, Peace. Peace is an elusive dream for the human race. Even some winners of the Nobel Peace Prize have been involved in violent conflict. Sunday, end of gloom for Galilee. Isaiah 9 verses 1 through 5. Jesus' early ministry was in the Galilee region, where he gave hope by announcing the good news of God's kingdom and by healing people. Here is where we see a perfect example of how the Bible takes events that happen in the Old Testament times and uses them to prefigure things that will happen in the New Testament times. The Lord mixed images of one era with another when Jesus mingled the destruction of Jerusalem with the end of the world. Monday, a child for us. Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7. Notice that this deliverer has several names or epithets that describe him in various ways. In the ancient Near East, kings and deities had multiple names to show their greatness. He has received all authority in heaven and on earth, and he is with us always. While retaining his divinity, he also has become human for all time, ever able to sympathize with our weaknesses. Tuesday, the rod of God's anger, Isaiah 9 verse 8 and 10 verse 34. If God had wanted to destroy his people, he could have given them up to the Assyrians right away. But he is patient, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. He also will allow us to face the fruit of our wrong decisions, pain, suffering, fear, turmoil, and so forth, all in order to help us to realize just what turning away from him leads to. Free will is wonderful. We couldn't be human without it. Woe to those, however, who use it wrongly. Wednesday, Root and Branch in One, Isaiah 11. In Isaiah 11, both comings of Jesus are presented as one picture. They are tied together because they are two parts of a whole, like the two sides of a flat plane. The plan of salvation to be completed requires both comings, the first, which already has happened, and the second, which we await as a consummation of all our hopes as Christians. Thursday, you comforted me. Isaiah 12 verses 1 through 6. Not only does the Lord bestow salvation, but he himself also is salvation. Not only did he bear our sins on the cross, but he also became sin for us. Not only does he make peace, but he also is our peace. When he is lifted up on the cross, he draws all people to himself. A remnant shall return to the mighty God, who is a child born for us, the Prince of Peace. Friday In the days of Isaiah, whose name means salvation of the Lord, God promised his remnant people salvation from the oppression that was coming upon them as a result of national apostasy. 
This prophecy of hope finds its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus, whose name means the Lord is salvation. Have a happy Sabbath!